Okay, so this is the image that I started working with. Then I replaced that uh, lamp with the moon, some adjustment layers, some lights, and that's the final effect. Well, not exactly the final one because then I merged all the layers and I used another document to, to get to this effect, which is the final image. I used the camera raw as a filter, and then I added some uh, additional um, adjustments. So let's start working on this. What I will do is copy this image as I have it here. So I'll go to edit, copy, merged, and I'll start on a new document. And this is the image that I used. Um, I made several uh, photos, but uh, this one, I like the composition. What I didn't really like about it is that the focus, you can see the hands are out of out of focus and that's a pretty big issue. But still the face, uh, it's in focus and uh, well, I, I ended up using this image. So the first thing that I want to do is go to my resources folder and use uh, this moon image. This is an image that I got from pixabay.com and um, we can use it for free and uh, let me crop it well let's uh, create uh, I'll use the pen tool to delete the background so what I will do is zoom in a bit and uh, add a point right there I'm pressing the shift key I'm moving this towards the left to create this sort of anchor point here then somewhere here in the middle I'll add another point press and hold the shift key and drag up well or down and create that second point and then another one right here again pressing and holding the shift key and then another one right here and then close the path with the last point here maybe I'll drag this one a bit lower pressing the alt and shift key to only modify the one that I have selected here and I'll convert this into a selection by right clicking and choosing make selection Click OK and now click the layer mask icon to create the layer mask, but you can see it cr creates it inverted. So I'll um, create, uh, press Ctrl Command I to invert the layer mask. Now what I will do is apply this layer mask right away. So I'll right click and choose not refine mask. No, apply layer mask because I'm happy with my cut here. The edges are too sharp. You will see we will soften them even more. But what I'll do now is with the move tool, I'll click on it and move it to my canvas right here, right there. And I'll convert it into a smart object and I'll name this layer moon. And the bottom one, I'll name it original. And now I'll make it smaller. With Control Command T, you can load the free transform and you can click this link icon and uh, you can make this smaller without pressing any, without pressing the shift key. And now I'll have to make it a bit bigger than this lamp here, but first I want to drop the opacity a bit so I can see through it. And I'll place it right here in the middle and I'll make it smaller. Uh, bigger, sorry. Just a bit bigger than the lamp itself. And uh, right there and I'll click I'll press enter and now I want to rotate it because I want this dark side to be on top like that and make sure you cover the lamp there right there maybe rotate it a bit more like that and I'll drop the opacity again because what I would like to do now is um, First, I want to make sure that, well, it's actually a bit too big. Let's make it a bit smaller. You can see it's not round, it's not perfectly round. Um, what I want to do now is create a layer mask for the moon layer, get the brush tool, and what I want to do is make the hardness of the brush um, pretty much as the um, blurring that you have here on that you see here on the on the fingers so let's see what hardness we can use about 67 percent and a brush size of about 80 pixels and I want to reduce the spacing a bit and let's try and see how that works. yeah it looks nice I think it's okay 
and just do something like that. I think I brushed too much. Okay. That's enough. And let's see here on this side. I'll drop the opacity even more. And here on the layer mask, again, I'll paint with this brush. And let's see here on this other finger, I'll probably do something like that right there. Okay, now I have the layer mask, I'll increase the opacity to 100%, maybe this part here on the on the left, I'll leave it how it was. Now I have the moon in place. If you want to move it around and you don't want to touch the layer mask, just click this icon and unlink the layer mask from the layer. And now you can move this uh, around like that. See that? Uh, let's leave it how it was. And what I want to do now is um, soften the edges of this a bit. You can do that actually before you create the layer mask because now I have to convert this into a, another smart object so that I apply the mask non-destructively and I'll create a new layer mask and uh, I'll control click the moon and uh, well actually now I have to invert this selection and fill it with black. Let's uh, delete that and do it again. So control click and then create the layer mask. It's a lot easier. And now I'll right click on it and choose refine layer mask. I'll zoom in at 100% because I want to see the edges here. And what I want to do is increase the feather amount to, to soften that and then uh, shift the edge a bit to about minus 20% and uh, increase the contrast. Just making sure I'm not seeing that uh, lamp edges there and click OK. I'll check the I'll set the output to layer mask. Click OK. But now I also touched this part of the mask, which was OK. So what I will do is I want to use the brush to reveal that part because that was correctly masked. Just make sure that you don't touch the edges. Great. Now have a bit of a softer edge, which is what I wanted. And I also have to um, blur a bit the moon. That's what I don't like. Um, that's why I don't like having the hand out of focus because that means I have to um, to throw the the moon out of focus as well. Uh, otherwise, it will not look realistic. So um, that's it. I applied uh, two pixels of blur. If you don't want to do it, just don't do it, but I think it looks a bit more realistic having the hand out of focus to keep the moon out of focus as well. Okay, so now we have this. What I want to do next is add a levels adjustment. You can also use curves. And uh, here, what I want to do is, first I clipped it to the moon layer. You can do that by right clicking and choosing create, uh, choosing, uh, create a clipping mask or Alt, put the mouse between the two layers and click. And here, what I want to do is, make the midtones a bit brighter, also the highlights a bit. If you press the Alt key while you move the sliders, you will see this sort of black and white overlay, which shows you if you're clipping the tones. In other words, if you're losing detail. If you do something like this, you will see at this part that is white, uh, it's areas where there's no detail, you, you, the highlights are blown out. So just move it slightly to keep some of the detail there, maybe make that like that and just something like that. I wanted to have the moon a bit brighter than how it was. And if you want to change the color of it, you can double click and use the outputs level, the output levels. If you move, if you move the slider to the right, to the left, uh, but you have to go into the blue channels first. If you move this to the left, you will start to see that the highlights become white, um, yellow, sorry. I'll leave it to about 250 or 249, just to give it a, a yellow tone. Okay, the next thing that I want to do is add some glows of light around this. So what I will do is load the moon layer mask by control clicking on the layer mask. And now I'll create a new layer and uh, I'll get the brush tool now. 
and I have to invert the selection because right now I have selected the inner side of the moon and I want the outside. So I'll go to select inverse and now I'll select this brush tool. I have this set the hardness to 0% and increase the size to something about the size of the moon, maybe a bit bigger. And let's say we'll change the blend mode of this layer to soft light. Uh, no, to soft light, no, to screen. You can try soft light as well. And we'll use a dark tone and something a bit more yellowish, but very unsaturated as you can see here. About here, let's see if it's too bright. And just click once there to add a glow of light. But I'll make a brush, I'll make the brush a bit bigger. Yeah, like that. And let's try it again. And that's okay. And uh, now you can see I painted this without affecting the brightness of the moon itself. You can also do this using layer styles here on the moon layer, but uh, I liked uh, to use the this uh, brush tool. Now I'll create a layer mask for this and let's name this layer glow. And we need to brush some stuff here. First, invert the color. So let's set the, make sure you set the foreground color to black, use a big soft brush, drop the opacity and the flow to 50% and just brush out the lower part of the hands and the fingers here because the light should not this glow should not be visible under the hand there and also here on the top part I want to not reduce it completely but uh, almost because you can see this dark side here um, should not emit any light and that way we only have it there on the sides and now create a new layer and name it uh, light to set the blend mode to color dodge and here you have to use a really dark tone like the one that I have here maybe get the brush tool make the opacity and flow to 100% and click a couple of times there to add some light on the face see that and maybe here on the shirt as well um, let's use a just a bit of a brighter tone and uh, maybe a bit darker to paint some areas right here. Over there and uh, just some tones around here. Oops. Make sure you don't touch the moon itself. It's too bright already and uh, uh, we don't need more light there. So yeah, um, that's the light effect that I created with the brush. We're pretty much done. Um, so if you want, let's add some inner glow on the moon, see how that looks. Um, actually inner shadow because we can change the angle and we don't want too much light here. So let's set a negative 74 for the angle, a bit of distance and a bit of size and change the blend mode to normal. And uh, Let's see how that looks. Increase the, the opacity a bit. Maybe change the tone of this to something a bit more yellow. Yeah, not, not, not looking bad, I think, um, where that is right here. Okay, and maybe some outer glow as well. Let's see how that looks, outer glow. But reduce the opacity a lot to like 11% or 8% and a size of about 75 pixels just to soften the edges of the of the moon and that's that's it that's how I created this composition now just make the final effects uh, I'll just uh, created a stamp with shift alt control E or shift um, alt or option command E on a Mac and here I applied the camera raw filter. If you don't have Photoshop CC and you cannot use this, uh, you cannot use the camera raw as a filter, you can um, use, you can save the image and, and open it in Lightroom or open it in camera raw, but you have to change some settings here. Uh, let me show you that. So if you want to open JPEG files in camera raw, what you have to do is go to the preferences on file handling here 
and here where it says camera raw preferences uh, and here on the JPEG and TIFF handling where it says JPEG uh, set it to automatically open JPEGs well the one on the bottom automatically open all supported JPEGs and that way you open uh, the file in camera raw and you will get exactly the same interface that I get right here and here what I did is I increased the clarity a bit I lowered the highlights just a touch and here what I, I should have um, maybe I could paint uh, this area here and um, not increase the exposure but increase the shadows to make this dark spots a bit brighter so the shadows to the max and also the blacks a bit and the highlights lower them so with the brush I just painted once there and uh, now I'll click OK and I'll open again the camera raw because I don't know how to exit the <laughs> how to exit the brush here in camera oh yeah I should have uh, well anyways and then what I did is I changed the temperature a bit to something a bit more yellow increase the clarity a bit more and lower the highlights a bit more maybe increase the whites like that and then um, some split toning right here set the hue of the highlights to something yellow like that and increase a bit the saturation not much and then on the shadow some cyan and increase the saturation as well and maybe play with the balance I don't want to have them too much uh, I don't want to have too much um, cyan on the shadows and then for the effects I wanted to add some post crop vignetting reduce the midtone a lot and then increase the roundness oh, no the, the feather sorry and set the highlights to the max because we don't want to affect we don't want this um, post crop vignetting to, to affect our our highlights and maybe add it too much and I'll go back to the the uh, split tone because I wanted to add some more of that yellow there on the highlights and I'll go back to the basics and probably increase the what not the whites the the highlights a bit more and maybe the shadows right there And well, this is the effect that I got. So I'll click OK. And you can see the before and after without the camera raw and after camera raw. So as I said, you can also edit this in Lightroom. And that's how I got this, uh, this effect. I hope you liked uh, this tutorial. I'm Andre from PSD Box and we'll see you on the next tutorial.